idea. So this craft fair series project is um, one that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm so excited to have completed it and ready to show you guys exactly what I did and how to create these. I'm calling these trendy journals and this is just probably a quarter of the amount that I did or maybe a third. Um, so as you can see the gorgeous designs on here I totally used up a lot of papers for my stash and the most important material in this is the composition notebook. So these are the full size composition notebooks, just the standard um, nine and three quarters by seven and a half size composition notebooks that you can get out right now for like 50 cents. Some stores even have them for 25 cents. It's a great time to go out and buy them because of back to school. Um, and they just come, you know, with notebook paper, perfect for a journal or perfect for really any note taking or anything. So I happen to have about 25 of these in my stash that I've had in my stash for over five years now. And they're in perfect, crisp, clean condition because I had them sealed in a plastic bin in my craft room. So I have been dreaming about this project. I'm somebody that is obsessed with journals, you guys. I have so many journals. And the ones that I'm drawn to the most are the ones with like the inspirational quotes on them and the the realist pictures that are like, you know, edited and made beautiful. So for example, this right here is a perfect example of the type of journals that I am totally into. And so that's where my idea was inspired from. I used up my 12 by 12 full image sheets for this. So I went through a, you know, almost all of my scrapbooking paper pads and just looked to see which ones, because I don't usually do, I don't do scrapbook layouts, so those big image pictures that are just, you know, the 12 by 12 full image, I don't normally use those um, for my crafting. I'm t I tend to use the more pattern pages, um, but I wanted to use them up and I had three or four paper pads that just were a full entire paper pad of those images. So I bought them because I fell in love with the, the designs, but I just haven't had a project for them and I couldn't really frame every single page to put in my house because that would get expensive, plus I would start hoarding framed pictures and it would just not be good. So I'm so thrilled that I found a project that I could use up those full image 12 by 12 sheets. So I'm going to show you the paper pads that I used in this project. Okay you guys, so I used four different paper pads for this. You've already seen this one. I used the Desert Dream and there was a cactus um, scene in here. Two, actually two, a desert scene and a cactus scene that I used. And I also used a lot from this paper pad. It's called Instacrush. But this is the Insta Crush. Oh my goodness, I fell in love with this paper pad. Just look at the images in it. They're the full, like, photo real, realist images. And I used a bunch out of here. This one, but this is one of my absolute favorite paper pads. This is called the Spiced Cider by DCWB. And again, it's these realist images. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. And then they've got, you know, wood grain and just different pattern pages. And last but not least, this is the paper pad I almost killed for this project, you guys. I have been waiting for a project to use this paper pad for. And this is called the Text Plus Photo Stack. Text Photo Stack. So as you can see, it's these realist pictures, all glossy and with quotes. And so I went through and I used almost every sheet in here. There's a few of um, put one of these together and I'll show you what I did with the scraps as well. So, first, before I do that, I'm going to show you all the journals that I created. Okay, you guys, so let me show you this journal and what I've done with it. And it's this beautiful um, sky and trees in the background. I just love it. And then on the inside of every one of these, I've lined the inside and I'll show you the paper pad I used for the lining. On all of my journals, I used a thin 
like computer weight style paper and I use this Newsworthy because there's so many different prints in here and it's that very um, just paper thin paper like the copy paper weight so what I did is I created this lining on the inside and I like the eclectic variety that I used it didn't necessarily have to match the outside but I like the eclectic variety that I used of the paper from the Newsworthy pad from Hobby Lobby. Um, and what I did is I took the scraps from this piece and I made a pocket in the front and I made some bookmarks. So I made two bookmarks and a pocket out of the scraps. You can put other stuff in here, notes, receipts, whatever. So and it's just the journal paper and then I lined the back as well with that pretty vintage distressed um, paper from that newsworthy paper pad and then here's the back okay so there's the first one and with the rest of them I'm not gonna um, walk you through slowly I'm just gonna put it on fast speed and I hope you all enjoy so I'm gonna have 22 of these for my craft fair and I'm like addicted to making these now so I think I want to make some for Christmas gifts Just to mention this is totally like not my idea obviously there are so many altered composition notebook tutorials out there and I just want to mention I made some Christmas planners one year for a tea party that I was hosting and it was like a gift for all of my guests And I made a bunch of Christmas planners out of composition notebooks. And I'm going to link that video below. Forgive the video quality, please. <laughs> because it was one of my first videos that I f had filmed. And I, I did, don't do a tutorial or anything. But I do share the Christmas planners that I made for my family members that came to the tea party. And it was so much fun. And the girls loved them. And so that's where I initially got the inspiration to do kind of like a simplified version for my craft fair and in this trendy kind of style. But my main inspiration for this came from the channel My Sister's Scrapper. Her name is Ginger and she is amazing. She makes the most amazing altered composition notebooks. So I'm gonna link her channel below and actually I'm gonna link my favorite composition notebook that she made below that video and um, I, you guys should go over and check it out. She just does the immaculate work. So that's where my inspiration came from, you guys. Now let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. Okay, you guys, here is the stuff that you're going to need for this tutorial. You're going to need a composition notebook, some 12 by 12, two sheets of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, 
and some paper to line the inside. And I like to use the thin um, computer weight style paper. You're gonna need some adhesive and some scissors. I used a pen and I'll show you where. And you're gonna need your paper trimmer and a ruler. And I also used wet glue a very little bit in one spot and I'll show you that in a minute. That's optional. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The, the first thing you are going to do, and let me talk about this for just a second. Unfortunately, these composition notebooks are not 100% consistent when it comes to where this black um, strip is, is laying. So what I mean is there's this like canvas black strip that is for the spine of the notebook. And I'm going to give you a tip. Don't try to glue any paper to this because it will come up. So I like to start my paper right at the line there. And that's what I was saying. Unfortunately, this measurement is not always consistent on every composition notebook. So I can't give you an exact measurement. What you're going to have to do is when you're creating one of these, just take your ruler from the edge of that black strip and just measure to the end here. So sometimes it'll end up being six and a half and sometimes it's a little more, a little less. So in this case, let me zoom in. Um, this is going to be six and five eighths. So it's the little um, eighth inch mark right after six and a half. Six and five eighths on this particular composition notebook. So I need to remember that, so I'm going to write it down, six and five eighths. So the measurement for the length is consistent, and it's a tricky measurement, but it's nothing you guys can't do. I definitely want this gorgeous, glossy flower in the center, so I'm going to make sure to make my cut, you know, from here over. So let's go ahead and get our paper trimmer, so that way on the back, for the back side of this, I will do this side so it's kind of like you know that version of the paper so you do need two 12 by 12 pieces of paper for this I mean if you're doing it my way if not you can just you know cut down the measurements you need from any scraps you have or anything like that so let's go ahead and get our, grab our paper trimmer a lot of people use exacto knives you know to do this project I have never had good luck with exacto knives you guys it tears, it it just does not ever work out for me. So this is the way that I make these. You do not have to do it this way. This is just the way that I am choosing to do these. So what I'm gonna do is put my paper in and cut it at the six and five eighths measurement. Okay, so I'm gonna make my cut. So there's the width that we need. And now we just need to do the length. So let's see, I think I'm gonna cut off the bottom part. So this is the part that I was going to show you guys. I'm going to zoom in for this. So I'm going to go to nine and three quarters because that's what the measurement is that I'm giving you, that I gave you on the screen. But what I'm going to do is you see the nine and three quarters hash mark right here. So the composition notebook says that it's nine and three quarters tall. Okay. But I have learned by working with these that you need to take it a smidge, like seriously a hair just smaller. Don't even go to that ne next 16th hash mark. Don't even go all the way to that. Go like in between that and the nine and three quarters. So you're gonna literally take it a little, like a hair smaller. Okay, so now we've got the cover of our journal. And I'm gonna show you how to do the little rounded corners in just a second. But let's cut our second page for the back of our composition notebook. So we're gonna do the same thing, only this time, I'm gonna concentrate on this side of the paper for the back. <clears throat> and I'm so sorry about my voice. My husband's been sick and I think he gave it to me because i am got a sore throat today and a little bit of a cough. So sorry about my scratchy voice. Okay, so now there's our back and there's our front. Aren't these gorgeous images? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you, okay, so these are the scraps that you're gonna have left over. You're gonna have these two strips here, and you're gonna have these strips here. 
So I'm going to show you what we are going to do with some of these scraps at the end when we're all finished with the journal. So for the inside pages, you guys, these are going to be a little bit bigger. These inside lining pages are going to be nine and three quarters, a hair before nine and three quarters by seven and a quarter. Okay. So you're going to need two of those for each of the inside covers. Get these little um, edges perfect for my, because of the little rounded edge here. So what I do, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, you guys, but this is how I'm doing it. Okay, so what I do is I take my notebook on here, like this, where I want it, and then what I do is I line up this edge of the paper. So see, I lined it up, and all you can see are these little corners kind of sticking out. Because these are round, these journals are rounded. This and this paper is square. You're gonna have these little points sticking out. So all you're gonna do, make sure it's completely lined up, is take a pen and just simply draw a line where that curve is. So you've got it drawn on this side, and now you're gonna go over to this side and do the same thing. Draw a line where the curve is. So now you've got two drawn in lines where the curve where the curve is, where it's rounded, and you're just gonna cut that off. That's the simplest way that I've found that, like I said, the X-Acto knife does not work for me, you guys. So I'm just cutting off where I drew the little line on that side. Cutting off where I drew the line on that side. So now we have our cover with rounded corners to fit the composition notebook. And see, it perfectly fits. Right here and right there. So now all we have to do is glue this thing on. So what I like to do is I like to actually add the glue to the paper. So I'm going to make sure I get to the very edge of all sides of the paper. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on. My tip for you on how to put this on straight is to start at the bottom. Make sure this edge and this edge are lined is lined up with the book, with the composition notebook. So I'm going to make sure that this edge here and the bottom are lined up. So here I go. I'm going to line up my bottom and my edge on the side. Then everything should lay down nicely. So I've lined that up and that up. And now I just want to lay it down and go ahead and smooth it down. You can take your bone folder. You want to take your bone folder along this, 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 and this to make sure, you guys, that all those edges are down really well. Okay, so I've got my bone folder. So you just want to make sure that those edges are nice and in burnished down. The spine area and the top and the edges. And so I do have a tiny little bit of overhang right here and I'm just going to cut that off. I mean it's like a smidgen to make that have a nice clean edge right there. So as you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and smooth the entire thing down and it's nice and adhered to the book and it looks like a beautiful journal already. I'm so excited about this. here and sell these at your craft fair like this. I mean, you see them in the store like this and actually the little um, inside covers are kind of handy for students 
because there's a class schedule and then here's useful information. So you don't have to cover the insides, but I kind of made these as journals. So instead of, you know, classroom things. So I wanted to go ahead and line the inside. So that's where these come in. And here's a little tip. If you take like an ugly piece of cardstock, like I have here, <laughs> um, and you want to make a template, you don't have to keep, you know, doing your book like I was and cutting the edges. You can just keep using your template for the edges here. It's super handy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this. Okay, so I just realized that I cut one of my pieces too short. So I had to bring in one that I had already cut down and it was like a scrap left over. So this one's actually already, cor the corners are already done. So now all I need to do are cut out my little rounded corners for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my template and do that now. So here's my little template and I'm just gonna cut where the corners are rounded. So I, if you're gonna mass produce these, I do suggest you make a template because it makes your life so much easier. You don't have to keep using the journal to cut your rounded corners. And I just wasted, you know, a piece of ugly paper that I'm not gonna use. Okay, so now we can go ahead and line the insides of our notebooks. This one's gonna, and it's okay that these don't match. I think it's cute how it's kind of like a variety and it's got the green color in it. So I like the eclectic style. So that was perfect. And now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this in. And the reason I don't take it all the way to this edge is because I don't like to obstruct the, the middle here too much because it becomes bulky. So I'm just leaving a little tiny bit of an edge there. And the measurement I gave you will give that um, edge perfectly. cute journal and I just do take it a step further and I put a little pocket on the inside so that's where these scraps come in and I don't measure this I just totally eyeball it so what I'm gonna do is just take my paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut a square so I think I like the bottom so I, I will give you a measurement here since I want a square so let's do four inches, four and a half inches of this scrap, okay? So this is gonna become a pocket. So what you do is just go into your inside, and this is a very simple pocket. I'm not making hinges or anything like that. I'm just gonna place it right here to slip little bookmarks or notes in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over and you're just gonna glue here, here, and here. Glue this thing down and it becomes a pocket. So let it get a little bit tacky and then press your sides down so it's nice and adhered to your inside cover. Then with the rest of the scrap, along with this one and the two little strips that we had left, you can make bookmarks out of these or you can save them and do something else with them. You could even put another pocket out of this, you know, and put another pocket on the back. You can do whatever you want with your scraps. But what I did is I took these two strips right here that I had left over and I cut them down um, widthwise to two inches. So that's just taking a little strip off. So there's two inches, and here's two inches. So 
So I'm going to give you actually the length of these two because I didn't measure it because it's just the little strips that we had cut off before. So the length on these are actually six and a half. So these are six and a half by two inches. And now I'm going to take the little tool that you guys have seen me use a million times, my tag topper to, um, punch. Uh, you can use, always just use a corner rounder and a hole punch and it'll just look just like a bookmark as well. But since I have this cute little handy tool, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And it becomes a bookmark. So let me just, I, I made two of these for each of my journals. So here's my two bookmarks and I'm actually going to take some twine and make it like a real bookmark. So I just took three pieces for each bookmark and I didn't measure these. I just kind of eyeballed the length and you just take your three pieces, fold them in half and do a slip knot like you would for a tag. So here's my little loops and then just take the tails and put them through the loop for a slip knot and there's your bookmark. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one and we're going to put these in our journal. Okay so here's our two bookmarks. Sorry if you hear noise in the background, my husband's in here. Okay so now I'm just going to take my bookmarks and put them in our cute little pocket and I kind of like that the twine runs over the top here. See the front of the journal? They can see the little twine sticking out. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, you guys. So if you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I want to thank you so much for watching my videos and I've got another one coming up very soon that's another one of my sister's projects and you're going to love it, you guys. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Bye.